Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, I'm going to spend some time with the Camera Raw interface. Now, I encounter a lot of video pros who don't know much about Camera Raw, and it's really because it's a technology employed mainly by digital photographers. You're going to want to start shooting raw and asking for raw files whenever possible. You see, the key advantage of working with a Camera Raw file is that the data is usually stored in the picture, much more than you can normally see in a single exposure. What this means is you're going to have lots of options for making adjustments to the overall brightness, saturation, vibrancy within the photo, all of that without actually making a destructive edit. And this really comes in handy. If you have a JPEG and it's too dark and you start to brighten it, it's going to get really washed out and even pixelated. With a RAW file, you just don't see that. So let's jump in. I've got this particular RAW file here, and you could actually download this from the Creative Cow website in the podcast section. Let's go ahead and double click to open this, and this is going to open up into the Camera Raw interface. Now, RAW files are really a family of files, so depending upon which type you use, they'll have different extensions. This particular file is a .nef, and that's because I use a Nikon camera to shoot. There's other formats out there from each manufacturer, and really a RAW file is just that the raw data that's captured by the camera. These tend to run eight to 10 times bigger than their JPEG counterparts, but they're really worth it because they have so much more quality and so much more information to work with. Let's jump in and explore the interface. Now, when you open up the camera raw file, you see here that it gives us some important information, including the model of the camera and what we're doing with it. Let's just make this window a little bigger so we can see what's going on. And we're gonna work our way through these tabs. Across the top, we have several tools, and these will come in handy as we work, but we're going to start in first over here with the tab area. Make sure preview is checked so you actually see what's happening. The first thing I want to point out is that you have a lot of flexibility on white balance, and in fact, these settings match what you'll find in most digital SLR cameras. You can use as shot, so it uses the settings that were in the camera. Or you could choose any of these other options. Auto is going to look at the image and attempt to make the best guess, while Daylight says, well, this was shot outdoors, and notice how this warmed up this particular shot. We have others for a cloudy day or for indoor shooting under different lighting conditions, and obviously what this is doing is attempting to give the best white balance. Can't tell you how many times I wish I had this option on video footage, but it just doesn't exist. But when you shoot RAW for digital photography, you could change the white balance even after the footage was acquired. Let's keep going. Our next few things deal with temperature. So we can go ahead and cool and warm the shot. Notice they're cooling it down or warming it up. As well as apply an overall tint to the shot. Here making more green or magenta. Now we'll put that pretty close towards the center there, but I like the 5400 degrees Kelvin for the temperature. That's looking pretty good. Next we have the options to go ahead and fix exposure. Now a quick auto-click attempts to make the best judgment, and notice how much detail was recovered there in the bright areas. Now that went a little bit far, so I'm going to go ahead and open the exposure back up a bit. We'll set that to about a negative 0.4, and then play with recovery there to further recover the overblown areas. Look at the original photo to now, just how much detail was rescued. That's looking pretty good, except our subject here is a little dark, but that's okay. We can open up the fill lights here and bring them back out. And notice how the fill lights help brighten up the darker areas of the photo, much like you had a flash there when you first took it. Now contrast and brightness are pretty obvious, but they're not as brutal as they are in other programs. So you can use these to add subtle adjustments to the darks and lights in the image. Our last tab is all about color and clarity. Now, as we drag clarity over, notice how we get an increase or defocusing here. As I drag clarity over, notice how some of the softer focused or hazy areas become clearer. This is literally a selective sharpen, and it's very useful to cut down on haze or slight defocusing within the image. Next, we have vibrance and saturation. Saturation boosts all the colors, but if we go too far, you'll see that it actually starts to posterize things here. So let's back that off just a little bit and instead bring up Vibrance, which does a much nicer job of boosting colors without getting too saturated. That's looking good. We'll play with the temperature just a little bit. 
And I'm very happy with that. Where we started and where we've ended up. Look at just how much information has been rescued and how nice the colors are looking. Now, that's just the start of the Camera Raw interface. Be sure to come back next week when we explore what else we could do to this image to really finish it out and make it look great. In the meantime, head on over to creativecow.net and check out the Photoshop forums, and be sure to visit the podcasting page where you can download this file and get hands-on with it for some more practice. I'm Rich Harrington. Thanks for joining us.